dear friend Allah Apa again wherever you are whoever you are in in whichever time you live now or in future if you're listening to me and you're looking at this video the warmest Baha'i greeting to all of you continuing the uh, last discussions I would like to add uh, basically that Baha'u'llah has not come to uh, uh, get rid of the bad people in the Baha'i faith we don't believe there are that many bad people that uh, the effect of their you know evil doing causes so many problems in the world that is not the case Baha'u'llah says in the Baha'i faith, uh, Abdul Baha especially, I remember, in a quotation, he says that uh, the source of the wickedness is ignorance. The enemy of mankind is oblivion and ignorance. It's not so much the bad people. The mission of Baha'u'llah is not to get rid of the bad people, but it is to unite the good people. This is the source of the problem. The good people, they don't get along. As a result, because of their ignorance, lack of information to their level, or whichever level they are, their level and their position is not proportionate to the knowledge they should possess, the experience. Therefore, they don't get along and they fight and a lot of bad things happen. So the bad things happen by the good people. It's, very, it's, a, it's one of the biggest paradox that uh, Abdullah's definition of bad, as I said once, is lack of good, but the next one he says is the lack of bad relationship, lack of good relationship. If there's no good relationship, it says that, uh, therefore, bad things happen. The, he says like the poison of the snake is in the snake it's to protect the snake. It's bad if it comes to in my body. It would be a bad relation if I had that poison in my body. The same is uh, the situation right now. So this is the main theme that Baha'u'llah has to come to unite the good people because they are the cause of the problem. So the main mission of Baha'u'llah, the central core of it is unity. And this unity is not the unity of the bad people, it's the unity of the good people. Bad people are either uh, sick, if you see some crime happen, they're totally, their mental problem in they have. And maybe one percent of the people are really greedy and bad. Essentially, um, the unity has to happen between the good people of the world who are just thinking different, you know. So, he wants to attack, he wants the Baha'is to attack the ignorance. This is the thing, you know, the ignorance, the lack of knowledge. I create that balance. For the physical uh, problem, in my notes I've written, the physical ignorance, uh, thanks goodness, uh, is removed by the scientist. Right now we have so much physical understanding and knowledge of the planet, but we're lacking the management. We don't know how to use the things that we have created, when to use it, how to use it, how much to use it. We don't know that. So it's lopsided. The one side, physical power has gone so much up, but then the understanding is like a little kid who's been given a thousands of things. He's given an airplane as a gift, you know, a Lamborghini for a car. They have given him a submarine, they have given him an Apollo. What can a kid do with all of this? That is who we are right now. Basically, like a juvenile, you know, delinquent, that we have so much possession, this uh, proliferation of the scientists and science, they're just giving all of this to us. But as a result, we are getting lopsided. One side is not progressing at all. So in order to do this, Baha'u'llah has made his faith practical. So a lot of ideas are out there that they say we should do this, do that, do that, but it's not practical, it's not happening. Nobody accepts it, nobody believes it. 
and movement happens, it breaks down, it changes, we have seen it every day. In order to do that, to prevent this, Baha'u'llah has made the Baha'u'llah Faith practical by creating what he's called a world order of Baha'u'llah. This is a virtual house, a system, that when we get into this, like a spaceship, if we get into it, in an organization that he recommends, then we would be able to uh, succeed. But we have to be very careful. This world order of Baha'u'llah, or the Baha'i administration, which is called at the present time, is not the goal. We should not just keep making this order and this administration bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, a big, huge house with nobody in it, or wrong people in it. The world order of Baha'u'llah is a machine, a divine machine, a divine spaceship, whatever you want to call it. This needs drivers. If you don't know how to use it, how to drive it, for one thing, there's not enough people in it, it will not work. So, Shovey Effendi says that, the main author, really, of this part of the faith, he says that we have to be careful that this system that we have Baha'u'llah created is meant to get rid of the individuals that in the world self-proclaimed individual they call themselves the spiritual and they wear certain type of uniforms you know and they even talk the certain ways this type of people has been the disease of the spirituality as a disease Spirituality, religion as a disease. This is the aphid of the religion. Because this individual, they come, they say something, it might even not be that bad, except that uh, this church doesn't get along with that church, and this uh, uh, clergy doesn't get along with the Muslims, and Muslims, they don't get along with the Hindu, and then we have this, you know, conundrum. Uh, no one can solve it. But how this is the problem with this is that we're creating this Baha'i administration, which is this phase called now, the world order of Baha'u'llah, is to get rid of these individual, self-proclaimed individual that they want to come down and uh, rule over the heart and the mind of the mankind, and they're oblivious, and some of them are greedy, so they don't get along, either the ideology is false and incomplete, or they have, you know, a different intention in their head. As a result, people, you know, fight with each other. So. This uh, world order of Baha'u'llah is based on a way, it's based on a democracy. So he says there's no more Pope or Ayatollah or Kaham or I don't know, uh, Lama or whichever. He says that why don't we people have reached to a maturity to elect our own priests in a city? All of us, we can vote our ourselves. So next year again, change changes. And he still says we should, we're not aiming to vote for one person. One person does not create democracy. He says vote for a system. Vote for nine people in a city. Say this nine in combination would be the government, not just that person. So Baha'i they do not really vote for a person, never. They vote for an assembly of people, which is nine in a city and in a you know, country, nine, and in the whole world is also nine people. So, uh, the whole uh, theme of this is to get rid of the uh, ignorance, unite the good people, and um, get rid of these individualistic, you know, uh, uh, priesthood and whatnot, so the Baha'i they can come together in an organization, they can do it. And it is not yet completely democratic because the very essence of it, uh, the constitution of it is revealed by God. In a way, God is the boss here, nobody else. The constitution is divine, revealed by Baha'u'llah himself. So we, are, we see more of his presence because he was what, the, what he was saying and those sayings are here, here today in, the, in his book. Therefore, he is alive with us. So, and. Uh, but at the end of the day, all this 
used by administrations of the world order of Baha'u'llah is not the goal, Shoghi Effendi says. This is not the final uh, goal that the Baha'is are trying to create this edifice, this virtual government, um, a spaceship, as I said, no drivers, no. The goal is the Baha'i faith to be spread around the world, the heart of the people, using this system of administrations. But believe me, my friends, even Baha'i faith is not the goal. The goal is not all his writings of Baha'u'llah, all his books, and all of that. That is not even the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is the spiritual understanding and perfection of human being to acquire that spiritual goodness, generosity, that attributes and quality which make him to survive in the next plane of existence, without which the whole process would become wasted. So we have to understand that. So this administration, World Order of Baha'u'llah, uh, has a very important thing. It has to be written in gold, you know, what Shobhi Fendi says. Unity, he says, in diversity. As if Baha'is are not here to convert all the people to their opinion. That would be dogmatism. We're not dogmatic, we Baha'is. To say that we is the house we built around it and take our head right out of the window and talk to the people, you know, if they want to come, this is it. There is no other way, my way or highway. There's no dogmatism here. Shoghi Effendi says we haven't come even to replace the religions of the past. Baha'i faith is not comparable to them. Those religions of the past, they were all national revelations of God for certain nations. Baha'i faith is international, it's the confederations of all the religions. A Baha'i is automatically a Muslim. He is automatically a Christian, a Jew. He is a Hindu, he is the Buddhist. He is combinations of all the goodness that mankind has brought today. It's the confederations of every goodness, of all the sciences, of all the arts, of everything. He says there are many things that Baha'u'llah has not revealed, Shoghi Effendi says you can put it into the faith, consider it as a part of the faith. If Universal Laws of Justice decides to do that, they can. So, this unity in diversity is the very, very important issue. We Baha'is, we do not believe that we have to convert people. Baha'u'llah says, the whole humanity is one. It's more like a jigsaw puzzle called humanity, and everybody is a part of this jigsaw puzzle. If they come together in the world order of Baha'u'llah, the way the pieces have to come together, you'll write humanity, you'll see humanity right made out of this jigsaw puzzle. So if I come and convert a person to become like me, well then there are two pieces uh, the same in the jigsaw puzzle, one piece is missing. We do not ask you to become like us. Baha'i faith is an offer of friendship, is an offer of communications, is an art that we'd like to learn as a Baha'i to communicate with other people. To us, a person who calls himself a Baha'i, not necessarily is a Baha'i. Only God knows who really, who, who real Baha'i is. Because as simple as a signature on a piece of paper to say that I want to join Baha'i Faith and my name is this and my address is this, so you're a Baha'i. Well then potentially all the people of the world are Baha'i. If you're asking me, when Baha'u'llah came in, it's like the sun came in the night. Okay, tonight is everything dark. Tomorrow morning sun comes. When sun comes, everybody in the world is, uh, uh, have, can see the light. They're all enlightened. They all have the light. When I look humanity from 1844 till now, and I compare this humanity to previous, before the Baha'u'llah has come, 